Welcome back students who are taking uh, math for business and finance and math applications and we're doing the chapter 16 drill problems, the odd numbered problems. Um, let's jump to the next problem which is 16-3 and it says complete a horizontal analysis for Brown Company rounding to the nearest hundredth. Okay so uh, on the next screen on the next slide here I copied you know, what was in the textbook. And as you, you know, as you can see, working with a digital pen is great, um, but it does have some limitations and as far as neatness is concerned, the ability to write in different sizes. Um, yeah, I could fiddle around with it all day long trying to make it perfect, but I'm, you know, that's just not time effective. So here's the comparative balance sheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it and then I'm going, you know, explain what I'm doing and write the numbers down. Um, so pause when you have to and copy things down if you don't understand something because just due to uh, space limitations here, I'm, I may end up, uh, I may end up uh, erasing some of this information. Okay, now what we're looking at here is we're looking at a horizontal analysis. Okay, we're not looking at a vertical analysis. And when we were, uh, when you watch the theory videos on the horizontal analysis, um, remember it, it, the analysis went across the, uh, you know, horizontally, which is why it's called horizontal. But you didn't have to concern yourself with um, going down, all right? On the the vertical, you know, if I had as percentage wise, as let's say at twenty percent. 25 percent 15 percent so that's 40 50 60 um, and 40 percent they would end up being a hundred a hundred percent okay they would have to total up going down because I'm using this number as a basis um, to get these other percentages okay but with the uh, horizontal analysis we're just using a base figure and working off of that going across so I'm not, I don't have to be so concerned with what happens going down the page, okay? Because it's just, com I'm comparing, in this case, 2014, uh, you know, uh, 2015 against what happened in 2014, all right? And so that will allow me to, if I run out of space, to be able to erase, okay? So what we're looking at here is, like I said, the the base figures that we're working with is 2014. So it's the change going into 2015. So I end up taking for cash itself here, I'm taking 15,750 and I'm subtracting the 10,500, which gives me an, an increase or decrease. Notice that the decrease is in parentheses, meaning a negative, right? The amount here is 5,000. 250 okay and I would put a dollar sign there at the top of the column okay just like in the previous video when we're talking about the balance sheet when I have a column of numbers that are going to be you know totaled right I put a dollar sign at the very first number and I put a dollar sign where the total comes I don't have to put the dollar signs in between right so I would have written a dollar sign and then 5,250 here for the amount. Now that's that's the amount and what's the difference in percentage? Well, because my base number is 10,500, that goes in the denominator and the difference, which is the $5,250 goes in the numerator and when I divide that and you know that's going to give me 0 0.5, okay? Or and we have to convert it into a percent by moving the decimal over two places. So we end up with 50%. So in the percent column, I would write 50. And that would be, I can write it as a plus 50%. All right. Okay. And so now, all this is is just doing the same exact thing again and again and again. Okay, my base figure is this 13.5. You know, so I subtract that from the 18,000 and I get that 4,500, okay? And since 
4,500 is the difference. It goes in the numerator. And the 13,500 goes in the denominator. And when I divide, I get, um, let's see here, 33.33%. So I can write that as a plus 33.33. Now, I don't need to put in the percentage sign here if I don't want to because the column is telling me it's percentages, okay? Um, so I don't have to always be writing percent if I don't want, right? And then we're just, you know, we just continue on. So here we have, and I'll do this one. Well, I'll actually do them all, I guess, so that you know what the numbers are, but I'm not going to explain the, the mathematical process again and again and again. I mean, I will do it um, for this one here because this happens to be a negative. Okay, so if I take 22,500 22, and I subtract it from 18,750, I get a negative 3,750 dollars. Okay, it's important to keep the um, the commas and you know vertically um, aligned. Okay. Don't just put the numbers anywhere on the page. All right, so now to get the percentage, we have a minus 3,750, and we're dividing that by 22,500. And when we do that, we get a negative, because this is a negative number here, my percentage is going to be negative. Okay, I end up with 16.67%. So here I'm going to write either a minus 16.67 or I could have written, I like to use brackets, 16.67, because I'm an accountant and we use the brackets like that. Okay? But it's just fine to write a negative in front of it. Okay, so like I said, it's, you know, basically the same thing. One, you know, just keep on going down the page here. So the difference here is 9,000, which gives me a difference in percentage of plus 20 percent. Now we do have to draw underlines here because we're we have a mathematical calculation, right? I'm sorry I don't have to draw an underline over here because I'm not adding up and down, okay? But um, the total difference between the two here is 15,000. Okay. And that percentage is plus 16.39 percent. And, you know, like I said, all we're doing is just going down, you know, in the, we're going down the page and we're, you know, in the amount column, we have to pay attention to our uh, underlines and double underlines. So wherever you see an underline, you should have an underline in your amount column. If you, where you see a double underline, you have a double underline in that column also. So let's see, for the next, for building rent, we have negative 6,000. And that's minus 4.76%. Okay, there's no change here, so we have to put it in as no change, a zero. And then here we have a negative 6,000, right, because that's our total property plant equipment. And that's a minus 4.76. I'm sorry, 2.78. Sorry, erase this. A minus 2.78. Um, the reason why, I mean, even though it's 6,000 difference here, and when you're kind of like doing this and you're saying, okay, there's a $6,000 difference here, so why isn't it f uh, minus 4.76? Well, the reason why it isn't is because of the number that you're using for the denominator. Here we had 6,000, negative 6,000, um, over 126,000. But here we have 6,000 over 216,000. Okay, you're going to get a different percentage, so you can't just automatically um, assume that uh, that's the same percentage. Okay, and of course we have to draw an underline here, which means now we have a total for a total asset, so I have to put in the dollar sign, and then when I add that up, I get. 9,000 and there's a double underline there 
and that difference is 2.93. Okay. And you know, you know, this is just continue on down the page. Okay, so dollar sign 12,000. That's 10 percent. I probably would, um, since I'm working things out to two digits, I probably would continue to put the two digits after, you know, a whole number. Okay, um, 4,500 here. Um, and that gets an underline. Did that just out of reflex of just years of doing it? This is 25 percent. And so that gives me 16,500, and that is plus 11.96. Now, me personally, um, you could put the pluses and minuses. Me personally, I probably would not put the pluses, okay? And I'm just showing you different ways. I mean, there's no right or wrong to this. And like I said, I probably wouldn't put the minuses either. Um, I would use the, the brackets. You know, as long as you're able to indicate a positive and negative number, however you you choose to do that. Um, notice this way, I don't have, you know, it's a little bit less confusing if I don't put the signs, and I just assume that uh, you know, no sign is a positive number, and by putting a bracket denotes a negative number. It just makes everything look a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. Okay, so the mortgage note payable is twelve thousand. And that's 13.79%. And as long as you're consistent, okay, you're good. So an underline, and that's a total liability. So I have to put a dollar sign, 28,500. And that is 12.76%. I'm sorry, 67%. Okay, so the difference between these two is a negative... 19.5, which is a negative 23.64, <coughs> excuse me, and this is going to be a total, so a dollar sign again, and that's 9,000, and a double underline, because it's the end of a calculation, and that's 2.8. Nine three. Now notice um, here. You know when we're looking at this, if 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 you kind of like drew, you know, if you kind of eliminate it, everything that's below this blue line or next to the blue line. In other words, if you put a piece of paper and you covered all of this this area up here, that's in the blue. Okay, what you have, what you have here is, is your balance sheet. Okay, so you have to follow the correct formatting uh, issues with a balance sheet, right? And when you're doing it here in your amounts, you're following the same formatting issues. So notice that my assets, right, my uh, total assets here are nine thousand. Well, my total liabilities plus owner's equity should be nine thousand also, even though that's a difference. Okay, even though we're we're subtracting, adding, well, we're subtracting one number from the other, you know, it's everything in this column should follow the same formatting issues, um, although we're calculating it, you know, in a different way. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of like point that out out to point that out to you, so that yeah, as you're working through this and you're writing these numbers in, your double check is to you know, it isn't just write the numbers, you know, oh, I subtract this from this and write it here, subtract, and just do it as a, as a machine. You should be thinking about what you're doing as you go along. If I came down here to, and I'm doing my total assets, and I get 9,000, well, you know, that 9,000, you know, should reflect, um, you know, what I have, you know, all of these numbers added together. In other words, here's 15,000 for my total current assets, and for my property plan equipment, I have a negative 6,000. So 15 less 6,000 is what gives me my $9,000. Notice how I thought through that, okay, as a double check in order to make sure that my work is correct, okay. 
Um, and again, the same thing with like, you know, my total assets should equal my total liabilities plus owner's equity. And of course, my total liabilities, you know, and my equity, 28,500 less 19,5 gives me my 9,000. So, you know, don't just do the math across, you know, um, think while you're doing it. And as you're thinking while you're doing it, um, you think of it as a double check. Okay, so that's the end of this problem, and I'll see you in the uh, next video for problem 16-5. Okay, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, watch the video again. And if you still don't understand, contact an instructor. See you in the next video.